From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. We are so happy that we can be with you today to share some of the global headlines and to explain how the Bible really brings these thoughts out and what they really mean. The first one, the war on drugs has failed. We're going to be giving five different disasters that indicate we are nations globally in distress. All right. Washington's grim face-off. Well, we'll never forget this. We saw those faces a lot on TV lately. And then going on, debt default would be dire for. Now, I want you to look at those last two words, global economy. We are in global economy distress. Puerto Rico debt woes grow. And then regional power sting firms in Indonesia. Now, you know, friends, we could go around the globe and name so many countries. They're all in distress. You know, Greece, they didn't know what to do. So many other countries. Well, Jack, what does this indicate? From the Bible, the Bible says it will come. This whole thing is about debt. And the Bible teaches that there's an hour of tribulation coming. And when you hear about what could possibly happen right now in America, if they don't get this problem settled, there's an hour coming when there's going to be a catastrophe in this nation like we've never known and spread globally. And I think it's coming very soon, if not now, very soon. Mm. You say, why? Because James chapter 5, verses 1 to 4 says, Go to now, your rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten, your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you in judgment day. And they're wailing. Why? Because they've heaped together great amount of capital, all kinds of money, all kinds of material goods in verse 4. But in Revelation 18, which is the tribulation hour after we're raptured, they are really crying their hearts out. Chapter 18, verse 10, in one hour is thy judgment come. Verse 17, in one hour so great riches has come to nothing. Verse 19, in one hour is she made desolate. It happened in Germany. Germans went to the markets with bushel baskets of marks worth a million of American dollars only to take home a peck of potatoes. Folks, those days are coming. This next indication of world problems really burdens my heart. And it has to do that drugs is at an all-time high right now. The war on drugs has failed. It hasn't worked. Going on, no peace in Colombia with a war on the drugs. And of course, South America is one of the highest. Brazil, the army takes on the drug gangs. Here again, Mexico, the war within. Oh, my. And then Mexican drug cartels literally do control parts. Oh, can you believe it? Parts of Arizona. Again, Jack, I must say this is a global problem, not just here in the United States, Mexico, and South America, but globally, drugs. Now, I want to use a special word from the Bible, which has been translated sorceries. Now, there are five times that that is a mistranslation. A sorcery is a terrible thing among people who practice witchcraft. But in those five instances I'm going to mention, it is the Greek word pharmakia, from which we get pharmacy or drugstore. So wherever I'm using these texts now, it's that word. Remember it. All right? This is the greatest sign that Christ is about to return. Why? Revelation 18, verse 23. The whole world was deceived by drugs, Father Micaiah. In Revelation 9, verse 20, they're worshiping demons. That's going on now, too. And they would not repent of their murders, their drugs, 
their fornication and their thefts. Now, this is really shocking. Why? What did people do to get money for drugs? Murder. That was the first one. The third one was fornication, seller buys and prostitution. And the fourth one was thefts, breaking into homes to get something to buy drugs. Now, not only do drugs ruin lives on this earth, but they keep one from entering heaven upon death. What? Yes. Now, keep in mind that sorcery means drugs. All right. Revelation 21, 8, the fearful and unbelieving and abominable, whoremongers, sorcerers, and all idolaters and liars shall have their pride in the lake of fire, which burneth with fire and brimstone. Revelation 22, 5, outside of heaven are dogs and sorcerers, drug addicts. I'm sorry, it's God's word. Now, there's the word witchcraft in Galatians 5, 19 to 21, also from the word sorcery because witchcraft and sorcery are united, but it means drugs, all right? The works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. Of the which I tell you before, which I'll tell you again, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It isn't worth playing around and getting high on drugs and missing heaven. Jack, you know, I'm so happy that you can be forgiven of that oh, yeah. because so many young people are hooked on it. I'm yeah. not talking prescription drugs. I'm talking just to get high and enjoy Yeah, but got to repent it. and ask God for forgiveness. Yes. And ask Christ to save them and change them, yes. And, and he will. Yeah. Thank the Lord for that wonderful promise. Now, I'll never forget this past year. So many horrendous things happened with our weather. There were floods and there were fires unprecedented across the United States. And again, weather across the world is a great concern globally, as I said. Huge cyclone leaves trail of destruction in India. 17 were dead. Well, there you have another country. Typhoon, Fitao, cripples China. Now, there were more than 500,000 people that were able to be evacuated, but some didn't quite make it. And here you see another heat reaches triple digits and strains power grids. Now that's in California. Now some of those generators have been running full speed for many hours and they were not designed to do that. Again, from the Wall Street Journal, the West bakes under heat wave as mercury sets records. Well, there you have it, Jack. What a outpouring of... Oh, tribulation almost on the earth of all the heat and fires and everything, floods, cyclones, I've everything. I've never seen anything like it in my entire lifetime like 2013. First of all, it depends where you live. They are called cyclones, hurricanes, or typhoons. And Jesus said in Luke 21, 25, that nations would be in distress and the sea and the waves would be roaring. And I remember the floods there at New York and New Jersey as Governor Chris Christie came out and tried to comfort the people. But then it talks about tornadoes where Luke 21, 26, Jesus said men's hearts will fail them for fear for looking after those things which shall come to pass on the earth for the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Let's continue. The heat breaking records nationally and globally. What is that? Revelation chapter 16, verse 8 and 9. The fourth angel poured out his bowl of judgment upon the sun, S-U-N. And power was given unto the sun, the scorchmen with fire, and men were scorched with a great heat. Now God has to do something about it to save lives. Matthew 24, 21 and 22, Jesus said, there shall be a time of tribulation such as never was since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be again. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. How did he shorten the days? He can't when the Bible says that the tribulation hour lasts 2,520 days. So he shortens the daylight hours by causing a darkness to cover the sun. That's in the Bible, Revelation 6, 12. I beheld it open the sixth seal and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And in Matthew 24, 29, Jesus again speaking. He said, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not 
give her life. God did that to spare life. And even Carl Sagan said there's an earthquake coming that's going to blot out the rays of the sun for at least 90 days. Wow, what an hour to be alive. Mm. But these are all signs that come after we're gone. Oh, Jack, you know, I was just going to say, someone's looking right now and say, whoa, that's all bad news. But it points to good news that we're going to talk about. What are the good thing that it really points to, and that's why we're in your home to share some good news, along with all the evidence of what's coming in the days ahead. Friends, something globally that we are really, really con concerned about, everyone is concerned. You know what it is, terrorism. Of course we're concerned about terrorism. Take a look, please, at the Wall Street Journal. Kenya grapples with trauma after deadly shopping mall siege, and we'll never forget that. Exploding violence threatens Iraq. Again, clashes kill 51 on Egyptian anniversary. Now, look, I've addressed already three different countries there. Afghanistan, Taliban target U.S. consulate, and then get out of Afghanistan now. We can't imagine a worse signal. While well, Assad and Putin lead the Obama administration into diplomatic blind alley, that's what this is all about. U.S. raids highlight terrorist threats in where? Africa. Once again, oh, this peaceful land. Violence imperils Philippine peace talks. Again, going on. Syrian jihadists insult Muhammad and be executed. If you insult Muhammad, you're going to have your head taken off. Once again, Pakistan, India leaders move to calm tensions. Now there you have a world of violence, friends, a world of terrorism. But the Bible predicted that, didn't it, Jack? I've already at home collected over 150 terrorist headlines around the world, and they are not the Hindus, the Buddhists, the Jews, or the Christians doing it. They are Islamic terrorists. And Jesus predicted it in Matthew 24, 37. He said, as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. How was it in Noah's day? Genesis 6, 11, the whole world filled with violence and terrorism. It's going to be like that when I come, Jesus said. Now, I love this. Here again, you're wonderful Savior in Luke 21, 9. When you have wars and terrorism, wars and violence, wars and revolutionaries, don't be frightened. These things must first come before what? When they're coming. Then shall they see the Son of Man, Jesus, coming in the clouds with power and great glory. Verse 27. And when these things begin to happen, then they are. Look up, your redemption draws nigh. That's the redemption of our bodies. Romans 8, 23, when he says, Come up hither, Revelation 4, 1, and they sweep through the heavenlies in the twinkling of an eye. But then he goes on to say in verses 31 and 32, when it's happening full blast, then you'll know that you are the generations, for this generation shall not pass from the earth till all this is completed. I do want to get to something very good. And that is that all of this is pointing to the return of the Lord. You know, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Or are we really ready for the coming of the Lord? Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? Is he in your heart? Is he your Savior? Jack's going to pray a prayer right now. Will you pray with him, asking the Lord to come into your life, be delivered from some of the things we talked about today? Jack. I stand on the Word of God 400 times. There's no other way to heaven but Jesus. Sorry, Pope Francis. Trust him right now. Look at me. Pray this, Lord Jesus. Thank you for what you did on that cross and shed your precious holy blood to wash and cleanse me from every sin. And Lord, I need you. Lord Jesus, thank you for Calvary. Thank you for your love. Right now, I'm asking you to forgive my sin. I've sinned. Lord, cleanse me, wash me, save me. Right this moment, I ask you to come into my heart this day so I can become your child. I pray this in your holy name, Jesus. 
Amen. Amen. Oh, did you pray that prayer? You know, we're all sinners, but Jesus died for all of us. He died for me. He died for you. He died for the world. I trust you prayed that prayer and accepted him. Write to me. Here's my address. I'll send you this little book that I've sent it around the world. First Steps in a New Direction. Oh, I trust to hear from you that you opened your heart to the one who can forgive sins. You can know you're going to heaven. Write to me. I really pray that you will order this wonderful, wonderful offer. No reason to hide. With everything going on in the world, should we hide ourselves in our homes? Are we afraid to speak out as Christians? Dr. Lutzer wrote a marvelous book. And you need to have this in your home. I really, really mean that. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive no reason to hide. Bob? To order your copy of the No Reason to Hide book with a bonus DVD, Stopping America's Disasters and Decline, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A, 6Y1. Oh, thank you so very, very much, Bob. And I want to encourage you to right now order this or write to us and we'll be happy to send it to you. You really, really need to have this. And I want to say that with your order, we'll be sending you this DVD. So I trust that you will be making the call. And Dr. Lutzer, again, I want to thank you for coming and for writing this wonderful book, No Reason to Hide. I just want to say this is so important when you're reading the Bible. Don't put a question mark where God puts a period. We need to accept the Bible as it is. Look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. And so do we so very, very much. Bye-bye.